All right, hi Year 11, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our first video on rates of reaction. It's about the collision theory, so let's start learning more. Okay, so what is collision theory? That's what we're going to be learning about. What are you going to need to make sure that you can do by the end of it? List the requirements for collision theory, describe the difference between a successful and unsuccessful collision, and list the ways uh, to change the rate of reaction. Okay, so please make sure that you are writing the notes or down whilst watching this video. Don't just watch it, even though you can watch it again. All right, so let's move on. Okay, what is collision theory? Collision theory, uh, chemical reactions occur when particles of reactants collide and change their chemical bonding patterns to new chemical bonding patterns. So that means that bonds are broken, new bonds are formed. So let's take, for example, um, uh, two hydrogen atoms in a H2 molecule two oxygen atoms in an O2 molecule. And then what happens is that when these two things are combined, you have to break a couple of bonds. Okay, so the bonds that are broken are the bonds between there and the bonds between there. Okay, and so when it turns into some water molecules, okay, new bonds must be formed and they are there and there, okay, between them. So effectively, what this thing has to do is that this, uh, this hydrogen molecule has to split apart. And this oxygen molecule has to split apart. And then these three will come together to form, form a new water molecule. Okay? A new water molecule. Okay? So they break the bonds apart and then they reform them again. And that is what's happening during a chemical reaction. Okay, so uh, that is what happens when a chemical reaction occurs. Okay, let's move on. Ah, wow, why is this thing moving along with me? Erase you, okay. All right, so collision theory. For this to occur, three conditions must be met, okay? Number one, the collision must be between the appropriate reactant particles, okay? So I'm going to highlight the important parts of this. You first of all must have a collision, and they must between, be between the appropriate reactant particles. You can't just have um, collisions of two hydrogen molecules together and expect a reaction to occur, okay? So between the appropriate reactant particles. The reactant particles must have sufficient energy, okay? Which means that they've got to hit each other hard enough to break the bonds, okay? This is also known as activation energy. So you can say activation energy or sufficient energy. All right. And then the reactant particles must collide in the correct orientation. What does that mean? Okay. Orientation just means it's the way that they are, um, the way that they collide in three-dimensional space. Okay. So let's go through uh, what those things mean. So first of all, let's go through a collision. That's fairly straightforward. Two things must collide, right? That makes sense. Here you have your two H two particles, and if you were to have a barrier between them, all right, and your O two particles, you would not be able to. Uh, they would not be able to collide. They'd kind of bounce off that one there and bounce off that one there, and so therefore they're not going to hit each other, and so therefore they're not going to react. Okay. So, other than that, not only do you need these um, things to hit each other. You need them to hit each other with enough energy. So if these two hit each other with only a little bit of an amount of energy, so the arrows represent how much energy they have, they're just going to, this one, let's see if I can do this right. This one here is going to go boing and then bounce off, all right? And not really um, hit and not really have enough energy to break apart the particles. But say I now have, let's see if I can get this right as well. Ooh, let's bring one of those as well over here. And now they have a lot more energy. Oops, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right, now they have a lot more energy. So they're moving a lot more faster. Okay, so if they're moving a lot more faster. If they're moving a lot more faster, oops, why did I do that for again? Right, if this thing hits it much harder, right, then this is going to split apart into its two component atoms, into its two component atoms, and it's going to force that one to also split apart into its two component atoms, and then these three here can form uh, new bonds, okay, so they all come together and they form a water molecule. 
All right. So that's what it means by it has to have sufficient energy. They've got to hit each other hard enough so that they can break the bonds um, apart. Or they, and if they don't hit each other hard enough, they're not going to break those bonds. Okay. Oh, how come I can't erase this? I want to erase everything. Here we go. All right. So um, that's the first part. Then the last part is the correct orientation. So before we had them hitting each other like this, but that's really not going to be probably the correct orientation because you uh, are going to hit each other end on. A better proper orientation might be something like this, okay, where they hit each other like that instead, which means that they have enough energy to break the bonds between those particles. No, between those atoms. Okay, so uh, this one here, probably no good. This one here, probably the better way to hit each other in the correct orientation. So this is the three conditions proposed in collision theory. All right, now these conditions are met. The collision is said to be a successful collision, resulting in the reactors changing into products. If either of the final two conditions are not met, then a collision will be unsuccessful. And so we dealt with what unsuccessful collisions are. Um, uh, oops, why is it black? Unsuccessful collisions look like okay. They'll just bounce each of, of each other and stay in their original configurations. All right. So if they are successful, if they are successful, then they'll um, break apart and then form new things. Okay. And we're dealing with because all of like, there's lots of collisions, but only a proportion of them are successful. All right. Maybe fifty percent. Maybe sixty percent. Maybe twenty percent. The frequency of successful collisions determines the rate of reaction. Okay, and that proportion affects the frequency. So the frequency uh, determines the rate of reaction. And so whenever you answer something, you must refer to things in the frequency of successful collisions, not in absolute amounts. What does absolute amounts mean? You can't say more or less successful collisions. Can't, can't say more or less successful collisions. Rather, you want to um, say that there are more frequent or less frequent successful collisions. Okay? That's an important thing when you're answering stuff about collision theory. Okay? And then finally, there is different ways to um, change the rates of reaction. Concentration, temperature, pressure, and pressure and concentration can really be linked together. I've made a mistake here. But these two really are kind of linked together. Presence of a catalyst, okay, Oops. presence of a catalyst, and surface area to volume ratio. Okay, so there's really those four, and you can talk about agitation if you really felt like it, but those four are the main ways to um, change the rate of reaction. And that's it. That's a really long video. Sorry about that. Adios.